At the state capitol in Hartford, lawmakers passed a new state budget last night, but work will continue in a special session. And joining us right now over Zoom to talk about the session and where some bills stand right now, Democratic State Senator Dr. Saud Anwar. Thanks so much for being with us. I know you're tired. It was a late night for you and other lawmakers, uh, but how are you feeling as the work got wrapped up last night or early this morning, I should say? Good morning. Thank you. This was uh, a very busy session and in a great session, we got a lot of good bills uh, through the session and we were able to pass a budget. So I'm very excited and, and happy that we have been able to accomplish a whole lot this session. Uh, what do you like about the budget and what do you like about the fact that it was able to be bipartisan without a lot of rancor or a lot of brinksmanship? I, I think that there are a lot of good things about it. The, the most important thing that I can see from our collective responsibility perspective is that we have a highest rainy day fund. We are paying down our debt. We are going to make about a $1 billion um, bulk payment to pay down our debt. We actually have invested in our seniors, our children, in education, higher education, health care. So we have increased our investment in the people of the state of Connecticut to make their lives better and also help the people get their lives together again after this or during this pandemic. So those are very critical parts of values that we live by and we have invested in those values. We're staying on the top of the budget here. Talk to the viewers at home, families that are watching right now. How is this budget going to help them? How is it going to affect Connecticut families? Sure. Um, first of all, there's not going to be any tax increase. So that's very important for many of the families who are already hurting. The second part, I think, uh, look for children. We are investing, making sure if there are children with developmental challenges, there's going to be complete protection from our state for their support for the education. We are actually providing more money to our municipalities. So there the municipalities would have to raise taxes either for the education part. So those are important parts for the education for the seniors who are hurting. We have actually given some tax breaks to the seniors in this budget with through some of the bills as well. And also for individuals who are in nursing homes and then the workers in the nursing homes, we have given them more resources. We have increased the Medicaid funding as well. And a combination of all of those things, every aspect of our life that, that impacts us, we have put investments and efforts to make it better. This session was all about making the lives of our citizens better in our state. Uh, before we talk about sort of the legislative status of the legal recreational marijuana bill, just want to talk about your standing on it, because uh, forgive me if I'm, I'm wrong. I'm just trying to recollect. I think you may have been against it just because of your background as a doctor with pulmonary care and uh, critical care in the past. Is that still the case? That's yeah, that is still the, the, the parts of the bill. I, I believe from a medical point of view are not as safe as I would want them to be. These include the fact that the delivery mechanism when people smoke this, it actually is causes oral cancers and lung cancers. Uh, that's something I, I think we have to recognize. And also when we use it before the age of 25, there is damage to the brain. I want the, the safety aspect to be a primary issue. Uh, I uh, have opposed it in the current form. If the bill had some changes, I could be a part of it. But I can tell you that uh, people had passed, my, my colleagues had passed it from the Senate and we may have to have a special session from what I understand to, to look at this uh, bill again. Can you expand a little bit more on what changes you would like to see to that bill? I think you mentioned the change of the minimum age for use. Is that your major sticking point? Yes. Uh, it is one factor. The other part is that we need to be clear about the delivery mechanism and also the safety around, uh, uh, look, that the legal limits of alcohol become irrelevant if somebody is actually smoked and also uh, been drinking alcohol. Near the, 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 as well. From a safety perspective, there is addiction challenges, and I want a very robust uh, plan to make sure nobody less than the age of 25, if that was the age that was selected, would be able to have access in any shape or form. And I want the, the important medical marijuana businesses to be protected. That industry is taking care of so many people with so many illnesses who need to be protected, and, and I want to make sure that recreational does not end up harming the legitimate, organized, effective medicine uh, that people are taking right now. 
Okay, uh, Doctor, State Senator, thank you so much for taking the time. Sorry, your feed was starting to break up there a little bit. I think we got the basic ideas yeah. of just some of the sticking points from the delivery mechanism. I'm guessing he would rather to see people uh, eat it or take it in some sort of edible form versus smoking. Versus smoking, and, and then, then the, uh, the minimum, minimum age. age. And uh, he also mentioned the, uh, the the addiction potential is something that he, he is mm -hmm. still looking at too. Okay, so uh, thank you again uh, for Doctor Anwar. Uh,